Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're gonna continue with the skull. Um, thank you very much for the nice messages in the last video. We're always, always appreciative appreciative of your comments and support. Remember, comments, supports, likes, shares, that's what keeps us going. Um, we've had a great year last year and hopefully we're gonna have an even better year this year. So yeah, let's keep going. Um, today we're gonna continue with the skull, with this guy right here, and we're gonna turn this into a mini project. So I actually wanna do a, a, a series, like a mini series with this one. So today we're gonna take a look at retopology, Tomorrow, we're going to take a look at texturing. And then on Sunday, we're going to take a look at animation. We're going to animate this thing. Very simple. Just like a, a couple of cycles for like an attack or something. Even, it's, if, even though it's a solid object, we can still give it a little bit of life. So if you want to follow along, make sure to do your homework. Go back to uh, Wednesday's video, do your own little skull, and then follow the, the steps that we're going to do here. I'll probably share this one tomorrow on uh, after we are done texturing in case you want to try the animation yourself. Uh, but it's always a good... Uh, a good idea to try and do it yourself so that you can uh, practice. So uh, this guy right here is from an old project that unfortunately didn't come to fruition. There were several things in the production pipeline that well didn't merge together at the end the way uh, we were expecting to. We we're working with another studio um, and um, yeah, things just fizzled out. So we do have the assets and I was actually looking for some of them because I lost the skull that I was doing. This is a different skull from the one from Wednesday. Similar process, similar style, uh, but it's a different skull because I forgot to save, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I should really uh, give myself a a little, like, a red card or something, because I did not save. So, yeah, I was looking at some of the elements, like, this is another that I really like, another character, this is a Banshee, and um, it, it was, of course, this this were supposed to be, like, the like the undead ar army, and um, they were supposed to be, like, stylized, cartoonish. Fortnite was, like, really, really high at that time. Uh, this was in 2016, I think, 2017. So, um, yeah, um, unfortunately, again, the project did not complete. But anyway, this is the guy right here. As you can see, this subtool right now, it, it's at 1.2 million polygons or poly counts, point counts, which means about like 2 million polygons. And yes, we could take this into substance. If your computer is beefy enough, you should be able to do the bakes and everything with all of the details. But there's no need, especially because we have this very cool, cool plugin called Decimation Master. So if you go here into the C plugin tab uh, and then go into the Decimation object right here, you're going to be able to do all of these things. Now, there's a couple of options. We really don't need them as much right now because it's a simple object, but for more complex elements, you might need to do like a couple of things here. The basic one is just here, pre-process current. And what this will do is uh, CBrush will do its magic and uh, it will calculate where are the areas where this object has the most detail, okay? And depending on where those areas are, that's what you're gonna get a lot of triangulation. So we're gonna go C plugin and we're gonna say decimate current and let's say 20%. There we go. So we're now down to 256,000 points, uh, which is um, about half a million polygons. And you can't notice the difference. Like if I switch from, from the from the high poly to the like mid poly, it's pretty impossible to, to see the difference. And if you can't see the difference here, you're not gonna see the difference in the bake. So something like this, this skull right here, this is perfect for the, for the high poly. So I'm gonna export this guy right here. Let's go to our projects here next to live. I don't think we've done a skull before, have we? No, we've done a lot of things, but not a skull. So let's create a new folder. Let's call this a skull stylized skull because we want to do this sort of cartoonish. And we're going to call this skull underscore HP because this is the, is the high poly of the object. There we go. Now, I don't want to bring this into Maya because it's going to be quite heavy. This is the one that's perfect for bakes, but might not be the perfect for the retopology or reconstruction. And we are going to be doing uh, like retopology by hand because for this sort of elements, for this sort of characters where, where like edges and, and borders are really well and clearly defined, it's, it's better when your topology is done by hand because you know exactly where to place your, your points. So I'm going to go back here to see plugin and instead of a 20%, I'm going to do a 10% or even like a 5% and just hit decimate current. Now we might be able to see a little bit of the like fragmentation or the decimation, but it, it's holding the shape perfectly fine. So, so this right here is perfectly for retopology. I'm going to export this again. Um, let's go back here. I'm not sure why. Super should remember the last one that you used or something, but yeah. It's Seabrush. Skull, and let's call this a retopo, retopo base. Now, there's a lot of ways to retopo things. You can retopo them here inside of Seabrush with Seabrush Measure, or with C-Spheres, you can do it in Blender. There's some base tools in Blender or, or plugins in Blender. There's Maya. There's another software called Topogon. 
I've been doing this for 10 years, guys. Like I, I remember using Topogon 10 years ago and back then it was like the most important one. We still, or I think there's still not like a perfectly, perfectly like super fast way to retopologize things that need specific edge loops. If you're gonna just retopologize something because it's gonna be on the background and it's a character that's not as important, it's a super, super simple character, then yeah, zero measure works fine. Maya even has like auto retopology tools now. Um, but yeah, most of the times like doing traditional, like manual retopology is, is part of the deal. So you're gonna have to <laughs> kind of deal with it. So let's go here to Maya. I'm gonna say file, import, and I am gonna go of course to the projects. There we go. I always like to keep my projects organized. Otherwise, with so many files, things get tricky. So there we go. Let's go retopo base. There we go. So the first thing I need to look for is where the hell is the element? Okay, there it is. I think my grid's a little bit too big because I was working with, um, was it, I think it was Unreal or something. So let's go back to two, five, and one, I believe is the, the basic. There we go. Or you can just say edit, reset settings. There we go. So that's the that's the basic. Now, you do not, and I repeat, you do not scale this object unless you're also gonna scale the like the high poly. Because if if the objects do not match one on top of the other, then the bakes are not gonna work, and you definitely want the bakes to work, right? So you do not scale the object. I would rather, or normally, if if the scale is wrong, and and I'm going into texturing. Normally, I just like leave it like this, finish texturing, and after the texturing is done, now the final one that's gonna go into the engine or to the project or whatever, that one's the one that you scale because nothing's gonna happen there, but now the bakes are done, so all, everything should be should be working. So in Maya, retopology, I think it's super simple. I actually think it's like, a, a, in, in, in Spanish we call it catarsis. I'm not sure if the word is catharsis or something like that, which is kind of like a, a freeing experience <laughs> once you go into this thing, kind of like, um, um, I don't know, like drawing or painting where you just like go into automatic mode and you just do it. Uh, because yeah, it's, 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 it's fairly, fairly, fairly easy. It's just time consuming. So I'm just gonna grab the character right here. I'm gonna turn on a live surface right here. So this guy is not live, I can't select it anymore, but there's a lot of tools that interact with this element. So I'm gonna go here to my quadro tool and we're gonna start laying down the, the main line. So let's start with something simple like this uh, upper part right here. So I'm gonna create like one square right there, one square right there, and you just click, click, shift, and that's it. Click, click, shift, and that's it. Actually, let me let me turn on the hotkeys. There we go. So just click, click, and shift. Click, click, and shift. And that's pretty much the way to do it. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to take into consideration when we're doing retopology. One of those is the um, size of the of the faces. Like you don't wanna have like a super big face, like this and then like a super small face like this like that's that's not good it's, it's gonna look really bad and there's a lot of things later on deformations and things that will not look the way you expect so based on again the type of game you're doing the kind or the amount of uh, triangles that you have access to uh your your poly budget um you're gonna be adding the lines where, where you need them so for instance the eyes normally i like to start the eyes with um either eight or 12 uh, sides so in this case i'm gonna go for 12 as you can see, we have six on the upper side, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six on the lower side. There we go. And then from there, we're just gonna start extruding. We're just gonna follow the uh, the edge of the element out, like this. Okay, we just push it out, out, and out. Now, this is not a character, right? Or, I mean, it could be a character, but this is not like a traditional face character with skin and everything. So there are certain things from our traditional retopology that we can actually ignore. Uh, however, I am gonna add a couple of divisions here, like one on the top and one on the bottom to, to hold the shape a little bit better, because as you can see, that's a really important shape, uh, shape that the, the eyebrow. There we go. Oop just move things around. That's why I love, I, I really like doing retopology instead of Maya. I, I think it's relatively fast uh, compared to other softwares and uh, and you get a nice result. So there we go. Now, usually from this corner right here, we're actually gonna cross to the, to the other side. So we're gonna have like a middle section line that goes into the other side. Kind of like a, like a Batman's or a superhero Robin's Robin's like a, like face mask, right? So it's just kind of like this sort of look. We've, we've talked about this before. I think we've done, uh, we did a, um, if you haven't seen it, uh, one of the older videos from last year, we did a face, uh, Strath, uh, a vampire face, 
and uh, and we did something very similar. I was going a little bit more over the the main phases of topology. If you haven't checked it out and you want to learn a little bit more about character topology, that's a, that's a great video. Now here uh, we of course need to bring this thing like up while keeping a symmetry line like this. But then over here we want to cover or or capture all of this detail right here. I'm actually going to start splitting my topology. See how this line flows up, and then on this side we're also going to have that sort of like similar flow over here. That way this ridge right here will have kind of like a like a little bit of an extrusion, right? Very important. Later on, like over here where the where things become flat, we can simplify that ridge with just a couple of triangles. Triangles are your friends when you're doing retopology, especially for games, because they're gonna allow you to, to capture the silhouette in a in a more accurate way. Now this line, for instance, we can continue it throughout the psychomatic arch, all of this. Sorry, is it hollow? No, it's not hollow. Perfect. Okay, we move this here, and we keep going all the way over here. Now, one of my rule of thumbs whenever I'm doing retopology is um, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. So that's uh, something that a teacher used to tell us. And uh, to keep it simple means that, okay, I'm just going to create like all of this gap right here first, and then I just bridge across the whole gap, and then I add another line, right? Because if I start drawing one square at a time, I mean, yeah, you can do it. That's going to take forever. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to be as efficient as possible. So one of the best advices that I can give anyone who's doing retopology, keep it simple. Keep it simple first. For instance, like all of this area. Like I know that I need to, to add elements all throughout the whole area, right? Let's add a big square first. Or like two big squares like this. And then let's say, okay, we have two lines right there. One, two. And then it's easier to just go one, two, three. One, two three. And then over here, there we go. Now here, uh, we're, we're gonna have a dilemma, right? So we need to know whether we want to add a line that's gonna go all the way to the eye, or or maybe we delete this faces, and we change the topology right here to add a couple of lines over here. See? So see how it's a lot, a lot easier to just like add the lines on when we need them and not uh, like from the from the very beginning, it's gonna be really, really, really handy for the for the whole element. You usually want lines to be going like up and down and left to right. That's uh, like a like a nice rule of thumb whenever we're, we're rebuilding topology. But yeah, this is this is looking good. So yeah, let's just continue here. And uh, for instance, if we go to the nose, which is another important part, the the main points or the main parts that you want to try and, and hold are are the edges, right? Because as we've mentioned in the in the sculpting section of this thing having this sort of like hard surfacey edges on the on the element, that's one of the things that gives it the sort of uh, stylized vibe. So you definitely want to keep the edges there. Um, and then just like, keep going here. So for instance, usually there's going to be like a line, it's called a nasolabial fold. In this case, we don't have a nose and we don't have a mouth, but I would expect it to, to like be going down over this uh, or through this area. Uh, this one's eventually we're going to, of course, line them up. So let's create you, you should always as another like rule of thumb you should always try and keep a a nice line down the middle of the of the character that's gonna again hold the surface and the or uh, of course it's gonna allow you to mirror which is super important but it's also gonna uh, make it a lot easier in other areas triangle there it's fine that's fine like don't don't worry too much about triangles they get a bad reputation but they're good they're just like a like a double edged sword so so you need to to be careful where to where to place it. So see here that the topology is getting a little bit too like intense. So let's relax there a little bit to, to help it out. And then we got this sections right here. So whenever you have like a curvature, I always recommend three faces. So you're gonna have one, two, and three. And those three faces are gonna allow you to create a nice like a uh, cylindrical shape. Because if you keep it just with one face, it looks very, very weird. So Pretty much every single like uh, teeth that we have here and the, and the canal for the teeth, they're all gonna have like like three faces. And then of course, if we need to to simplify them, if we need to to keep it like or given less polygons because we don't want all of these lines going into the into the topology of the of the upper side, then uh, we're gonna have a couple of triangles. Again, triangles are not bad as long as you know where to place them and uh, why are you placing them. Yes, it's not it's not placing triangles just for the sake of placing triangles. It's placing triangles to help us solve a specific topology like uh, sections. So for instance, here, here, 
all of these areas. Now, this again also has to do with poly count. I'm, I'm thinking this is for like a, I don't know, like a game for, for computer or for console. So that's why I'm not being as, uh, as restrictive with me with the amount of polygons that we have. But if this is for like a mobile game, then you're probably gonna go like super, super, super low, depending on the, on the platform that you're uh, developing for. For instance, here, again, trying to capture all of this like nice sharp lines that we have, even if we need like a triangle there, that's fine. Um, like that one works fine, that one works fine. And then we can just start moving this over here. There we go. Triangle over there. Now, I am thinking about giving a little bit of rig to the whole thing. So even though bones never move, right? They're, they're solid. Um, I, I am thinking about giving a little bit of movement. So, so that's why I'm also trying as best as possible to, to hold some of the traditional like topology rules and techniques here on, on this guy. Uh, because I might want the eyes to like open and close a little bit. We're gonna do that on the on the Sunday video. So make sure to come back. Sunday is always like a <laughs> like a rest day, so our our audience and our views always uh, always diminish a little bit. But I'm sure you guys you guys will be here, right? Hopefully you you can enjoy that video as well. There we go. So see how I'm doing those triangles. So I'm skipping one and then doing one triangle, and that simplifies the amount of. Uh, of lines that we need so so that way when we get all the way over here we are not going to need as many points now of course we need to see or do something about this uh, over here so i might be tempted to just add a couple of extra edge loops right over here and that way the topology is going to flow a little bit nicer like this right again relax that's why the life surface here in my is so so powerful because it's very easy to just relax the points and uh and uh, make sure that the, the shape is flowing in the in the best possible way. Let's keep going over here, and that's gonna that's gonna create like the border that we have here on the on the bottom section. And there we go. As you can see, that's uh, that's looking quite quite nice. Let's fill in this uh, this upper part right here, and um, I'm gonna finish this thing right here first. Little triangle there, that's fine. And then we can just start like filling here like this. So I'm gonna do probably like. One over here, oh, here, and there we go. Now here, I think we can afford one triangle. Again, it's, a, it's in an area that's not going to move as much, and that way we're going to have a, a nicer topology. Way, way nicer topology. One, two, three. A little triangle there, that's fine. We can relax. Don't relax the edges though, like this edges right here. Those are important because they help us with the, with the overall shape of the element. Don't don't relax those. Uh, only relax the, the ones that we need. Now here's the tricky part. This is actually a mistake on my part, like that hole right there. Uh, you shouldn't have geometry that's as thin as this guy right here. The best thing would be to go back to ZBrush and, and, and fix this. But I'm going to show you how to like avoid that in case you can't go back to ZBrush. So the first thing is I'm going to close the hole or at least the, the section here, as close to the hole as possible, kind of like hiding it right there. And then let's isolate this object for a second. I'm going to fill this hole. So I'm going to say mesh, fill hole. Okay, because I, I don't want to go in and, and, and like rebuild all of the all of the components inside of that area. It, it makes no sense. And uh, at the end of the day, we can just paint this like dark, like shadows, and we should be fine. So from here, we're just gonna grab our, our cut tool and we just need to make sure that um, this like cap that we just created is all like quads and triangles. So there we go. That's a, that's a way to, to hide that uh, mistake that we did inside of ZBrush. So yeah, now we just keep going. It's a matter of uh, like continuing all of these lines down here and start creating like all of the borders. Wow. I modeled everything. I, I didn't even remember that I modeled like the atlas and the <laughs> all of the little joints and stuff. Good for me. That was a, I was a very diligent artist back then as well. That, that's one of the cool things about uh, working in a production, and, and I think I've mentioned this before. I usually mention it in the, in, the, in the premium courses that we do, which by the way, we're releasing a new one really soon. I'm gonna be sharing some, some more information uh, as soon as we get a, the, the green light. Um, but when you're working in the production, usually, usually in, in like the best case scenarios, um, you're going to have more time than you normally think. So, so a retopology for this thing, for instance, I'm going to try and do it in like 30 minutes or a little bit less. 
you probably get, will have like an hour or two hours and to make sure that it's like really, really, really nice. Because um, from a production side point, it, it's it's worth it more to, to pay someone two hours of work and make sure that that two hours are like perfect work rather than only pay them 30 minutes, have them rush the, um, the task and then have issues later on that are gonna need more corrections and more time invested, right? So, so it's, it's a business uh, kind of decision. Again, not always. I've been in productions where, where time constraints are really, really tight and you have to work fast and then you make mistakes and then they have to pay. Sometimes they do pay you to, uh, to fix them because they uh, underestimated how long it would actually take. And sometimes you have to fix them and you have to um, sacrifice a little bit of your time to, to make sure that the production uh, follows through because it's your responsibility. So yeah, it's, uh, there's a little bit of everything on the on the production side of things but uh as you can see it's not that difficult like retopology it's not that difficult whenever i have to retopologize like complex assets like a full character a full character the first few times that i was uh retopologizing them it took me like two days to retopologize like a full character with the props nowadays i can probably do it in like six hours um but I definitely go for like uh, my favorite like snack, takis, you know that. <laughs> and then I, I pl uh, put on my favorite playlist and um, and just get in the zone, get in the mood and start re-topologizing. Couple of triangles there, kind of like stitching um, on that area. Again, to minimize the amount of, uh, of lines that are going all the way down. Let's take a quick view here. I'm gonna go to the front view. Whoop. I'm gonna grab all of the fr uh, front vertices right here. Make sure it's only the front vertices, there we go. And then with the R key, I'm gonna slide them and snap them to the center so that we have the the element. And yeah, that's that's looking good. So uh, eventually we're gonna say mesh display and soften edge, as you can see. But look at the silhouette. This is the most important part, the silhouette. So if you press, press number seven here instead of Maya, you're gonna see how the silhouette is holding up. And yes, it looks low poly, but that's fine because it looks super sharp, super clean, and we're getting a super, super nice effect. So that's definitely what you want for, again, for stylized characters, because eventually shadows are gonna play around with those edges and with those volumes, and they're gonna look super, super nice. So let's fill this in. Uh, another uh, quick tip here. So I'm gonna grab this edge and I'm gonna go into Quadro, Options, Quadro Options, and then I'm gonna say Extend Edge Loop. And what this will do, or sorry, Extend Edge uh, Border. I'm gonna press Tab and then Extrude. And as you can see, this will extrude this in like that. And you're gonna see some of them, some of the corners are gonna start like becoming triangles. That's fine because this is a, a cap. So we can very easily paint this in with again, with shadows and stuff. So we don't need to worry that much about this. Now, if you want to do like like a traditional geometry here, you can you can of course do it. Um, but normally, even just like a like a fill hole and a poke should be more than enough because as you can see, that's just it's just a cap. I'm gonna have one more edge loop there just to give a little bit more more support, make sure that we're capturing the the curvature as nice as possible. And there we go. So again, let's isolate mesh display, soften edge, and that's what you're gonna see in game. So as you can see. No weird normals or anything. Things are looking nice. Things are looking sharp. And we're really low in, in polygons. Right now, we only have uh, 786 um, triangles, which is super, super good. Because that means that probably like the whole thing is going to be like 2K triangles, which is quite nice, quite optimized. The history, let me save real quick. Um, let me set the project. We're doing a, a catacomb on, the, um, on, on one of my classes. I've been, I've been wondering if you guys are also interested in some sort of like uh, game modeling for or uh, environment modeling for games. If that's something you guys are interested, leave, leave, leave the comments. Uh, that's it. There we go. So we're going to save here as the stylized sculpt. There we go. Give me just one second. Very well, so let's continue. And uh, I'm just gonna grab again my tool here. We still have this set to live surface. Um, I'm gonna save you guys a little bit of, um, um, what's the word? A little bit of time. And I'm gonna show you how to do like, I'm just, as you can see, I'm just going through this hole. One, one good thing that you can do when we're retopologizing things, if you see that there's something that's circular or have a, has like a very specific edge loop, edge looping it, like making sure that there's like a clean edge loop going around the object, that's usually a good idea, just in case you ever need to do something else. Like again, deformations or uh, certain types of animations and stuff, uh, having edge loops, like a clean edge loop, like, like this one right here, that's always a, a good idea. So let's bring this in. There are gonna be other details like this look, 
bony protrusion over here where, where that's not as important. But usually, if you can if you can do that, that's fine. Now, of course, see those cracks and stuff. You don't need to go into the cracks and retopologize them because all of that detail is going to be catched or are caught caught catch caught. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's going to be on the normal map. So all of the elements that you get on your normal map are going to be exactly there. So yeah, just finish the same. Again, a couple of triangles there. Smooth this so that we follow the surface. If this is way too low poly, like if you see the silhouette later on, and it's like ah, this is a little bit too much uh, simplification. That's when you start adding more and more. Um, Ash loops and stuff to uh, properly capture the element without going over your poly budget, but at the same time making sure that the uh, silhouette of your character looks good. Retopologizing objects like this, like this skull, uh, I actually find it quite nice and, and simple because you don't need to worry too much about the formation. Characters uh, on the other side, uh, they do need to be you. Do, you do need to pay a little bit more attention on things like the the bend for the elbows, on things like the um, of course the face topology, like. A full character does have a little bit more. We do have uh, two courses. I did two courses for here for next to where we talked about characters. The first one is the demon character creation for games. Uh, that was a little bit old. I think that was one of the first ones I did. Um, uh, and then, however, like a lot of the, the stuff is still uh, valuable, all the anatomy. Um, and then we have the stylized soldier, which we were giving away for free a couple of uh, weeks ago. If you didn't see, uh, there's the newsletter. Maybe, maybe if you go into the code, you'll find that you can still get the, the, the course. I'm not sure. So give it a try. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you here, guys. I'm just going to do one teeth, one single teeth. And I'm going to combine it, of course, with the uh, with the object here. And then I'll, um, I'll do all of the other ones off camera just to save a little bit of time. Okay. So for the teeth, the most important thing is, of course, going to be the little like a uh, like intersection right here. And and here's where you need to be really, really smart because if you try to combine all of the vertices into a single point to, with merge to center or something like that, yes, that will work, but it will look really sharp and really weird. So for this kind of things, I like to do this effect right here. So I'm gonna create again, three lines or three like sections going into the into the object, into the teeth, into this, it's like the side of the teeth and then like the front of the teeth. But when we get to the point right here to the to the extreme, Instead of like merging everything into triangles, I'm actually going to use the top part here to create a little bit of a of a switch here. So you can see how there's a, a switch in topology. See that? So it's like, like an edge loop. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So we're going to have another square. This is going to be the side view of the of the teeth. This is going to be the back view of the teeth. And this is going to be like the other side of the teeth. We might need a couple more divisions on this like back part like this, maybe a triangle there. But as you can see, this teeth right now, or right here, does not uh, look as uh, as sharp as a, just like a spiky teeth. Okay, so you can see again, if we take this here, let's say mesh display and soften edge. That teeth, it still looks like a teeth, still looks sharp enough, but it's not like pointy, right? Because again, if we were to just like grab all of these vertices and be like, yeah, merge to center, it's a spiky teeth, you're gonna get some weird like normal shading over there. And uh, for stylet things, you usually want things to be like rounded and smooth. Uh, so yeah, that's it, guys. I I'm gonna stop the video right here. Again, as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing um, textures, uh, bakes and textures tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna show you a very cool, cool technique, so make sure to come back. And um, I'll show you how to how to continue this guy. So I'll, I'll finish the retopology here. Just a quick note, after you're done with the retopology, I mean, it's pretty obvious, um, you're gonna have to just mirror it to the other side. I'll probably start the next video at that point after doing the retopology, mirror it, we're gonna do UVs, and then we're gonna texture it or, or take it to Substance Painter to give it a quick uh, texture, hand-painted hand painted style texture, okay? So yeah, hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.